Kaleka Braga Kumbayare Gosha Leko Sende Bara Kazuri Rakashi Reku Bago Siyama Madusi Kaba Rako Nyande Sote Shata Mamba Rakoshi Leko Brande Basha Raba Sende Reku Talida Oh Father we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ Bara Tande Bashita Liko Ba But without you we are nothing But without you we are nothing Oh Lord we worship you we give you glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Father, thank you once more. Thank you once more. Thank you once more. Thank you once more. Ala braba shara gabra bo samanda ridika. Le konde ba shanda re kabra sonda roda sile. Le o sinde bra kusha barandu si. Oh, we worship you, Lord Jesus. We submit under your tutorship. We submit to the Spirit to teach us today once again. In the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, welcome again to a brand new service. Um, like we all know, this channel is dedicated to enlightening your eyes as to the end that your script your Christian life be strengthened. Amen. And I trust God that our week has been great, our week has been successful, our week has been a blessed one. So uh, I believe that the thing we learned last, last week, we were able to put it to work and God was able to help us as well to identify the things that are not safe for our health. Hallelujah. Today, uh, without wasting time, I want to go into a message. Uh, that is titled First Gospels in the Church. First Gospels in the Church that you need to avoid. Now, what are these first Gospels that are ravaging the Church this day that is making believers weak? Because I, from studies, I begin to discover that there are certain false Gospels that is being preached in the Church that is making believers weak. So for that purpose, I came with this message to the end that you might be enlightened to know what a false gospel is and preserve yourself. Hallelujah. This message is not in any way to create division. This message is not in any way to make you begin to search for errors and begin to attack people because even you yourself you are not perfect. However, this message is here to enlighten your eyes to the end that when you see these things, you'll be able to what, shield yourself from them and save yourself and as many that you can what, you can save. Hallelujah. So uh, we are going to read the book of Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1 from verse 18. Jude chapter 1 from verse 18. <clears throat> Let's see what the scripture says about the topic we are about to uh, look into today. Jude chapter 1 from verse 18. Okay, please media your help us. Jude chapter 1 verse 18. Hallelujah. He said, They told you that in the last times there will be scoffers whose purpose in life is to satisfy their ungodly desires. So this is Jude, Apostle Jude, telling us that we have been told that in the last time people will come who their primary purpose of entering the kingdom of God or their primary purpose of doing the work of the ministry is to satisfy their ungodly lust uh, uh, the king james would put it ungodly word desires then verse 19 <clears throat> verse 19 that said verse 19 please so if there is no doubt that the scripture has forced has warned us ahead of time that a time is coming where people will use the gospel as a means to satisfy their ungodly loss. Verse 19 says, These people are the ones who are creating divisions among you. They follow their natural instincts because they do not have God's spirit in them. So you can see that there is a scripture that said some enter the church subtly perverting the grace of god for ungodly desires we will get there now these are scriptures that are making us know that it is not everyone or every preacher that is out there that is actually preaching the right gospel there are preachers that are actually preaching the false gospel and 
I'm about to expose three of the false gospel I believe that has rampaged the church for a period of time. Now, first, before we go know what is false, we need to know what the gospel is. And if we don't know what the gospel is, then it will be difficult for us to know which one is a false gospel. Now, let's define the gospel. What is the gospel? Now, the gospel is simply the good news that because of God's mercy, through the through the death and resurrection of his perfect son jesus christ god redeemed sinners who otherwise had no hope of salvation now man was lost man was a bond in bondage to sin man was totally in helplessness but because of god's mercy and grace he sent his only son to redeem the world to himself the bible said in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 he said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in the son should not perish but have eternal life so you can see that because of God's mercy we didn't do anything to to merit it God out of his sovereign will decided to save mankind to himself and that is an act of love and mercy so because of that is the good news that is what the gospel is all about the gospel is about telling people that because of god's grace and mercy he has redeemed mankind he has given salvation to mankind and that is the primary word gospel the in simple terms sinners receive god's free gift of salvation by grace through faith that is the simple definition of the gospel the gospel is centered around what christ did to redeem mankind the salvation of souls is the primary gospel hallelujah hallelujah there are other branches of the gospel which is true but the the center the epicenter of our gospel is the man jesus christ revealed as the savior of mankind and that whosoever believe in him we have this world eternal life so that is the gospel so knowing now what the gospel is now let us examine some of the first gospel that have been ravaging the church number one is the gospel of prosperity or you call it the prosperity gospel now don't get me wrong god blesses people god the bible said let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause for the lord delight in the prosperity of his people and in the book of third john verse 3 he said i wish you above all things that the man may prosper and be in health even as i so prospered and in the book of psalm 123 if you read it down he said blessed is the man that feared the lord who delight is in the Lord. The, if you read it further, it said, riches and prosperity shall be in his heart, yet his righteousness endureth forever. Now, these are scriptures that shows us that God blesses. Anyone who is diligent towards him is blessed. The Bible said in the book of Job, that fear the Lord, give yourself to him, then you shall make up good as dust. So it means that every time man walks with God diligently, there is always a byproduct of prosperity that comes with the man however when the prosperity gospel is now the primary gospel that is being preached that is not the primary gospel let's see what the prosperity gospel is now the prosperity gospel i wrote is a message that promises and prioritizes health wealth and happiness over sacrifice and hardship the prosperity gospel is a message that tells people that just give your life to Christ and everything will be over. You know, when you give your life to they did not they don't let you know that following Christ has a lot of what sacrifice to be done. Let's read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from 12 to 15. 1 Corinthians 3, 12 to 15. Uh, media, please help us. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse, chapter 3, from verse 12 to what? three so following christ when we take prosperity and well-being as the epicenter of our gospel that is a perversion of the real gospel any time that the prosperity gospel is over exaggerated in the lives of people and it is not taught in the band according to the boundaries of scriptures the people will definitely what 
you will stir up the lost in the hearts of people. Hallelujah. Now let's he say anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials: gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. Verse uh, 13. We are reading to 15. Verse 13. He said, But on the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. Uh, you see that now. So this is Apostle Paul telling us what will happen on the day of judgment, where every man will present his works. Now in verse 14, he said the work will survive. That if the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. Then 15, which is our last scripture, our last verse for that scripture. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. Now, what does that mean? The Bible is trying to tell us that if we build on any other foundation, it is a faulty foundation. Because another foundation can no man lay, except that which Christ has been laid. When Jesus came to the earth, what was the primary message he was preaching? He was preaching the love of God. He was dispensing the power of God. He was dis- he did- Jesus did not in one day preach prosperity as a core message. With the only time Jesus talked about prosperity was in the book of Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 1 was found in Matthew chapter 6 when he said, Seek ye first, Matthew 6 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. All those things that he is talking about, you can read them in the verses before that, where he started telling them, Everything, these are the things that the Gentiles seek. But if you seek the kingdom of God first, these things will naturally come. So, the gospel is about the kingdom of our king not about our well-being our well-being is a byproduct of we being diligent to our king hallelujah now if you read the book of luke chapter is it luke now mark chapter 10 mark chapter 10 verse 28 and 29 they, they say master we have left everything to follow you what is our reward jesus himself replied that shows that there is prosperity to the one who serves god however prosperity is not the epicenter of the gospel any time that prosperity is taken as the epicenter of the gospel and preached in to the detriment of other aspects of salvation then that is what a false gospel the prosperity gospel taken as the epicenter or the core message of why jesus came to earth is a violation in fact it's a perversion of the gospel because you know the bible said in even before jesus came god has been blessing men so if you say jesus came to redeem man from poverty that is a lie because solomon was the wealthiest man in his time yet jesus was not yet come david was so great that he bought everything that would be needed to build the temple of god yet the by as a then jesus has not come now the abraham was so wealthy that even today we are benefiting from his wealth in the spirit now in the physical he has so many the bible says he has cattle he has great heads and everything yet god was blessing men yet jesus has not come now why did jesus come? jesus is not come because he wanted to redeem man from poverty not really so jesus jesus did not come because he wanted to read the primary purpose of christ's sacrifice was to redeem man to god to to a reunion reunite that that fellowship that was lost in the garden of eden not for prosperity not for living in good health those things has been on ground even before christ came so the primary purpose of the gospel our the main gospel is letting people know the grace of god that if you have faith in our lord jesus christ you will be saved and eternal life will be yours so we are not to prioritize wealth health and well-being over sacrifice there is sacrifice in the kingdom will be every kingdom has sacrifices to be paid and the kingdom we belong to is no uh, not la- other than that now there the, the problem with people that preach the prosperity gospel is that they don't believe in hardship they tell you hardship does not exist the bible said for our light affliction i used to tell people that especially ministers in the gospel that the best thing you can do is to 
prepare yourself and enlarging your heart prepare your capacity for the day of adversity because in the book of james chapter one uh, please give it to us media james chapter one verse two the bible said count it joy when you fall into diverse world temptation why will the bible be telling us to count it as a blessing now in the uh, um, New Living Translation, it said, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Now, it didn't say if. If he has said if, it means it's a condition that you can stop. But now it is saying when, which means it will definitely come. Even the Bible said, for our light affliction. So it means that we will be afflicted. Jesus said in book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 24, Matthew chapter 16 verse 24 so we are trying to examine what it takes to what follow Christ that the prosperity gospel alone is a perversion of the world of the gospel now Jesus said to his disciples if any of you wants to be my fellow follower you must turn from your selfish ways take up your cross and follow me so you see that turn from your selfish ways turn from your ungodly lust turn from anything that doesn't look like the kingdom you are now belong to now take up your cross and follow me in the book of john chapter 12 verse 25 john chapter 12 verse 25 jesus says something like that again john 12 25 john 16 33 now john let's go first with this. john 12 verse 25 john chapter 12 verse 25 hallelujah so john 12 25 he said those who love their life in this world we lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world, we keep it for eternity. So it is the Bible is trying to tell us that those who love an unnecessary pleasure will lose their life. Hallelujah. John 16, 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. Then you will also give us John 15, verse 18. John 16, 33, please. John 16, verse 33. The Bible said in John 16 verse 33, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrow. Many people don't want to hear this part of the gospel. But Jesus said that I told you these things I have told you so that you will have peace in me. The, in the King James Version, he said, my peace I give to you, not as the word give, but the peace that I give to you is from above and he said in the world you will have great tribulations and in the New Living Translation he said those things I have spoken unto you this is King James now that in these things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulations but be of good shares I have overcome the world so the the guarantee that we overcome is because our master overcame and if our master overcame then we being his followers following his footsteps we will definitely overcome hallelujah so there is no doubt try to tell people that the moment you come to christ you will just be prosperous everything will be just smooth is a perversion of the gospel because such people will build their faith on what god can do for them instead of what they can also do to promote the kingdom and because of that when they expect god to bless them and the blessing is not coming probably their faith is failing or for some reason their blessing is not coming they become weary but we are the generation by the grace of god that we say even though this thing i'm trusting god does not come i still trust him it is it takes the true gospel to make men to have such faith that in the, even in the midst of lack you still serve god genuinely from your heart hallelujah so james uh, john 15 verse 18 john 15 verse 18 john chapter 15 verse 18 jesus said in that scripture while we are waiting for it to be projected he said do not is uh, how did jesus put it now he said in the world he said do not be afraid when the world hates you because the first word hates me john 15 thank you john 15 verse 18 if the world hates you remember that he hated me first so do not can't it strange when the world hates you because they hated your master first so and jesus said you are not of this world so it means that the world will definitely hate us the moment we proclaim christ as our lord and savior so taking the prosperity gospel and making it a priority 
of the gospel is a great false doctrine. It's a false gospel. You have to wash out for it. That doesn't mean you should not preach prosperity. Preach prosperity in a biblical way. But to take prosperity as the center of the gospel is perversion. Hallelujah. Prosperity is a byproduct. The Bible said, how blessed is the feet of them that preach the gospel. It's not how so we need to understand that prosperity is a byproduct of we actually believing and preaching the right gospel taking prosperity as the center or the this focus of the gospel will make men weak and it will produce so many baby christians hallelujah number two is the sin permitting gospel mm. the sin permitting gospel now what does this sin permitting gospel mean this is a message that disdain or overlook the comfort, confrontation of sin and offers forgiveness without repentance while insisting on positivity. Hmm. Very dangerous. Now, this is a message that makes people feel comfortable living in sin. You see, in the kingdom we belong to, our nature is not the nature of sin. The, anyone that is genuinely born again has new desires. These desires are the desire to please God, the desire to do good things. You see, so it is wrong for you to begin to live in sin and still believe that you are at peace with God. Yes, you are at peace with God because Jesus paid that price. But don't forget, you have created a holy being. And the more you live in sin, the more you begin, you stay away far from God because God is a holy being and it takes a holy person to react to reason with a holy God. That is why God gave us his spirit to build us up. To remember, the Bible said, Blessed are the holy, for they shall see God. Those that are pure in heart, talking about holiness, they are the people that will see God. Any gospel that makes you feel comfortable living in sin is a false gospel a very false gospel because when you come to christ there are new desires that are planted in you you suddenly have the desire to do good things now let's see what the book of jude chapter 1 verse 3 jude 1 3 and 4 we'll read 3 and 4 then we'll read hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 jude chapter 1 verse 3 <clears throat> let's see what it says because when we don't pay attention to this part of the gospel that is being preached today. You see, there are so many messages out there that makes it look as though even if you live in sin, God, you are still at peace with God. That's true. I'm not disputing the fact that you are still at peace with God even if you live in sin. You are not at peace with God, actually. God is still at peace with you. But you on your own self, sin will make you to condemn yourself. Now, let's see what Jude chapter 1 verse 3 said. He said, Dear friends, I have been eagerly planning to write to you about the salvation we all share. But now I find that I must write about something else, urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all time to his holy people. Verse 4. To his holy word, people. <clears throat> Verse 4, please. Hallelujah. He said, I say this because some ungodly people have warmed their way into your churches. This was with, in the King James Version, the Bible said, some enter subtly, which means craftily. They, they, or they warmed their way. He said, for there are certain men crept in on our ways who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Give us the New Living Translation again. Hallelujah. So you can see the Bible is telling us here that saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The Bible says, should we continue in sin that grace may abide? He said, God forbid. When Apostle Paul was addressing the issue of grace, he was not trying to encourage sin. He said, it is forbidden for you to live in sin. Now, the Bible is telling us that there are all people that are saying, which means they are proclaiming it, preaching it, that the grace of God allows men to live immoral life. He said, the condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they have denied our only master and Lord, Jesus Christ. So you can see that any gospel that makes it comfortable for people to live in sin is a false gospel. Now, 
you shouldn't condemn people you shouldn't make their sin to be so obvious to them but you shouldn't make them comfortable in sin either you sh- the message should be balanced so that the people don't feel condemned and they don't feel comfortable in sin your message should be presented in a way that the people have this desire to to strive to please god hallelujah they they have this new desire to do the things of god right in holiness however any message that makes it very comfortable for men to live in sin any message that makes it look as though sin does not matter is a great perversion of the gospel let's see what uh, what sin can do to a man number one sin will open the door for the devil to attack you and one of the attack john chapter 10 verse 10 the bible already told us jesus himself telling us john chapter 10 verse 10 the thief commit not but to steal to kill and to destroy so we already know that every time you open up your door to the thief the devil now he, uh, he will come to steal to kill or to destroy hallelujah so now if you open up your life into sin then you open up a door because the bible said no you know that whosoever you eat your member servant to obey you become the servant of that person so if you are living in sin you become a servant of the devil and number two that sin will darken your heart in the book of romans chapter one if you read from verse 26 he said because of their reprobate mind god gave them to their own world ungodly loss now these are people that knew there was god you see that scripture is so sensitive these are people please give it to us romans chapter 1 from verse 26 i believe i'm right now these are people that knew there was god they once were serving god but because they felt comfortable living in sin after a time they said that why god abandoned them to their okay take it back take it back take it back to like 24 verse 24 24 now is it so god okay take it back again please take it back hallelujah uh 20 to 22 let's start from 22 okay oh uh, let's de- let's take it to 20 please there is a particular thing i'm looking for take it back to 20 you say you say for ever since the world was created people have seen the earth and sky through everything god made they can clearly see his invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature so they have no excuse for not knowing god so you see this now though it's not as though these people did not know god because everything around us testifies that god exists so nobody has excuse of not knowing god right from his creature down to everything that is around us tells us that god exists so we there is no doubt there is god but what happened in the next verse 21 so there is no doubt that there is no excuse for not knowing god but in verse 21 he said yes they knew god but they wouldn't worship him as god or even give him thanks and they began to think of foolish ideas of what god was like as a result their minds became dark and confused so this is what is can happen to anyone who lives in sin it's not as though you did not know that god jesus is lord it's not as though you did not know that god is the maker of what it's not as though you did not fear god from the beginning but when you become comfortable in sin your heart will begin to be darkened and confused then you begin to claim to be wise how because god has said sin is evil in his sight and because of the grace of our lord jesus christ you want to take the grace as an opportunity to live in sin now to you you think you are wise but the bible said claiming to be wise they became instead foolish so they became fools because they claimed to be wise you see that now the bible says if any man think he he is wise let him become a fool that he may be wise now if you claim you are wise just because you think you have revelation of why you should live in sin and god will not be angry with you now what you don't know is that you are actually going to be darkened give us 23 your heart will be darkened after a matter of time you will be so comfortable with that sin that it will the sin satan will use through that sin to take you very far from god and it is a dangerous thing to stay far from god safety is only in god and instead of worshiping the glorious ever living god they worshiped idols made to look like men 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 people and birds and animals and reptiles 24 24 so you see that they started looking for gods to worship so god abandoned them 
24 please god abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired as a result they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies so this is a possibility of anyone who lives in sin so any any gospel that permits you to live please give us hebrews 12 verse 14 any gospel that permits you to live in sin is actually killing you we are not made to live in sin sin makes the spirit man weak sin makes your soul to be condemned so you must work strive to please your master and you must avoid any sin that makes you what live in sin hallelujah so now in hebrews chapter 12 verse 4 they say walk at walk at living in peace with everyone and walk at living a holy life for those who are not holy will not see the lord so you see that holiness is the assurance of seeing god if you want to see god in this world and that to come then you must strive for a holy living the holy spirit is always there to help us and it's my prayer that god will give us a holy spirit the grace to live a holy life in the name of jesus christ you see nobody actually has an excuse because the spirit in us is a holy spirit so if the spirit in us is a holy spirit then the spirit should be able to lead us into holiness if we yield ourselves number three thing that the sin living in sin does is that it hinders your spiritual growth nobody can grow living in sin i don't think that needs an explanation there is nobody that can grow spiritually living in sin hallelujah number three which is the last false gospel that is being preached is the gospel of works number three is the gospel of works now we were saved by grace not by works there are gospel that make it look like it is what you do that gives you salvation if in a book of galatians galatians chapter uh, galatians okay ephesians 2 from verse 8 now before we go into that scripture why you are giving to us let us see what the world's gospel is the world gospel is a message that declares salvation through discipline rather than salvation through faith why inspiring fear and depression in its adherence now what do i mean by that the gospel of works is a gospel that makes it look as you have to do something to be saved you have to live a holy life to be saved you have to obey certain scriptural principles to be saved that is a false gospel you will don't do anything to be saved we receive salvation as a as god's mercy and free gift through faith we received it through faith not by works the bible said it is not of works ephesians chapter 2 please from verse 8 so religion always says we do so that we can become but the gospel said we have become so that we can do so god made us holy so that we can bring up forth holy fruits it's just like a tree a tree the fruit that you see in a tree is a product of its roots so the fruit that you bring out is a product of what is actually in you that's why jesus said by their fruit you shall know them because the root of everything is from the heart of man and that heart is very very vital so we need to know that we are not saved by what we do any gospel that makes it look as though you have to do something to be saved is a false gospel you we are saved by faith in christ we are saved by grace through faith in our lord jesus christ not by works or anything we do the bible said in ephesians 2 verse 8 is that god saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this it is a gift from god verse 9 we are reading to 10 it is a gift from what from god so anything that is a gift you didn't work for it it is a gift from from god so that you will not take credit for it say salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done there are good men today that will still go to hell the reason why they will go to hell is not because Jesus is not Lord. The reason is because they didn't take Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And they didn't have faith in the Son of the living God. Because the only route 
the only way of receiving salvation is declared if thou shalt believe in thy heart and confess with thy mouth the lord jesus then thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation that is the protocol for salvation however when you omit this protocol and believe that it is by good works you will see or you will make the kingdom or you will have salvation by your good deeds it, it has already been declared that is not what possible it is never a possibility in christ hallelujah praise god so we need to know that it is not of works we are not saved by the works we do praise the lord so we say salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so no but no one none of us can boast about it you see that now salvation is not something that we can boast of because we didn't do anything to merit it then give us verse 10 which is the last verse we didn't do anything to merit it hallelujah we didn't do anything so we cannot take credit for it he said for we are god's masterpiece he has created us anew in christ jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago so you see that the bible is trying to tell us that we actually become before we can do trying to do before you become is a fruitless effort you will not yield result that way you can never yield result the only way we can actually produce fruitfulness in this kingdom is that we we become before we do so we are saved before we can bring forth good fruit it's not that we bring forth good fruit to be saved no we are saved so that we can bring forth good fruit hallelujah you can't be saved by good works which i've said before so you need to understand that there is no amount of good work you want to do that will give you salvation salvation is only possible in, when you have faith in jesus christ so any gospel that makes it look as you have to do something to be saved aside the only thing you need to do to be saved is to believe and have faith then you will be saved but any other gospel that makes it looks as though you have to do enough good works for your salvation to come is a false gospel hallelujah now before i close i need to say this that we have pointed out these false gospels doesn't mean you should go ahead being a heresy hunter what i mean is you are you listen to preachers and all you are trying to find out is their errors if you do that then you yourself you are at fault because nobody like i said earlier that we are talking about falsehood in the gospel doesn't mean that somebody cannot preach about prosperity i can preach about prosperity as a matter of fact i've spoken about prosperity before i can preach about holiness i can preach about your the place of your works i can preach about the grace of god however when i try to make prosperity the epicenter of the gospel that is where it becomes a perversion of the gospel. When I try to make good works as a way to salvation, that is where I become wrong. Any, even when you see people at fault preaching these things, proclaiming that this is what the gospel is, do not fight them. Let me show you a scripture of why you should become. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 so anyone who is preaching these things there is already a vetted for them you don't have to fight them you don't have to do anything you just need to remain calm stay true to the true gospel stay true to the true gospel galatians chapter 1 verse 8 he said let god's cause fall on anyone including us or even an angel from heaven who preaches a different kind of good news than the one we preached to you so the gospel that christ brought he said if anyone even an angel should preach a contrary gospel let a cause fall on that person so allow the cause to fall on them you don't be the one rendering causes trying to pull people down with your mouth trying to insult people cause them that they know even if you notice they are preaching the false gospel lovingly pray for them do not try to attack them allow god's way or way of judgment to take place do not take the place of god in anything you do hallelujah i pray that 
these things that we have learned will guide us into truth in the name of Jesus Christ. So remember that someone believes in wealth and prosperity doesn't make that person a prosperity preacher. It, someone only becomes a prosperity preacher when he takes the, the gospel of Christ as it takes prosperity as the gospel of Christ. That is not true. Someone is not perverting the gospel because he preached holiness. It can only be perversion of the gospel when you make it look as though it is true holiness, people will be saved. Then that is perversion of the gospel. Someone is not perverting the gospel just because he preached about just because he preached about the love of God and the mercies of God over sin. But it becomes a perversion of the gospel when he preaches to make people feel comfortable living in sin instead of letting people convicted of their sin to repentance. Because the goodness of God actually leads to repentance. So if the goodness of God does not lead anyone to repentance, then that person is hearing the wrong gospel. Hallelujah. I pray that God will guide our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, the Bible said this is the record that life is in the sun. And whoever that does not have the life does not have, whoever that does not have the sun does not have life in him. So life is not about breath. Life is about knowing Jesus. The Bible said Jesus himself that this is eternal life that they may know you as the only true God. So if you are following, you have not given your life to Christ, you would like to do so now. I would like to pray a simple prayer with you. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you as a sinner. Have mercy on me. Forgive me all my sins. I believe in my heart that you died for my sins and you were raised on the third day for my justification. I cast all my bodies upon you this day to receive of your life. Thank you, Jesus, for making me a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. If you just pray that prayer, congratulations. The Lord has accepted you into the kingdom of his dear son. And you have been taken from darkness into light. We like to follow you up. We like to pray with you. We like to build your faith with you. We like to mentor you. We please reach out to us with any of the channels that are suitable for you. Reach us on Facebook. We are all our a link at display on the screen for you. you can reach out through email facebook instagram or even on the comment section i will be glad to attend to you hallelujah so before we close i would like us to do something if you are standing for truth i would like you to write on the comment section i stand for the true gospel hallelujah if you are standing for truth i would like you to write on the comment section i stand for the true gospel and if you feel this message is helpful to you send it to people that it will also be helpful to so that their eyes can be enlightened and they can what be vigilant against false doctrine do not forget to subscribe so that anytime we come with teachings like this you will not miss out amen let us pray the lord bless and keep you till we see again in the name of jesus christ power of God will preserve you. The wickedness in this end time will not see you and your families in the name of Jesus Christ. The bad news that is moving around will not come near you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word that you have sent. We pray that this word that we have heard, we, we have be the doers and we obtain grace today to preach only the right gospel, no matter the circumstances. In Jesus' mighty name, pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. See you again. Shalom.